Good morning again, brethren. <laughs> Let's take two of this video. Um, recently, a uh, brother um, gotten a hold of me who I've been trying to contact. Um, there are some out there that I have not contacted yet. A uh, brother from Oregon I'm going to be trying to contact really soon here uh, over the weekend maybe. And um, so um, redoing this video over, starting over here again. So um, this is a video that um, I'm not really looking forward to doing. But we're going to be talking about marriage today a little bit. More so because this is something that has come up recently. Um, we're going to be talking about marriage and the physical aspects thereon too in marriage. Um, recently, there are those out there who have been slandering and knowing, knowing better, but twisting things in order to slander. And I cannot sit back idly and allow that or be silent about that. Um, I can't. I can't. I can't. There are those out there who know far more than they would let others believe. They are far more wiser than they put themselves off to be. And what we're going to be speaking about, there are those out there who know this but are twisting it in order to defame and slander brethren or sisters of the Church of the Living God. And like I, I addressed in the previous video, it has to stop. It has to stop. And when it comes to the issue of, um, you know, well, why don't you go to so-and-so so people personally? When there is an issue of trust there, for example, it's very bothersome to me that you can uh, that sending people emails nowadays is something that you have to be very um, cautious about because there are those out there, even though you do not give them any cause or there is no cause or any reason why to do so, there are those out there who have this in their mentality. It's like, well, I better save these because you never know when I'm going to have to use it against them. I know there, there's a, a tragic young Scotsman who um, sent him an email and then he, he did a whole video about an email that I had sent him. And it's like, wow, wow. I, I don't respect people like that. And I, I don't, I, I don't. And there are those out there who have hoarded e emails from people from probably up to a year, two years. Um, that, that's, that says a lot about the individual. A lot of the coadjutor devils do that. That's why uh, if to those who I know are working for the Vatican, that's why uh, I will not respond. And if I do respond, um, keep it very short and usually add scripture to it. So if they wanted to go ahead and use that email, go ahead, you know. <laughs> but uh, that, that says a lot about the person to me. It really does. Um, it says a lot. It says a lot. And when that kind of an issue exists, <laughs> not even going to go there, okay? But like I said, um, we are going to be speaking a little bit about marriage today and the physical aspects thereof, because this is something has, that has come up, uh, and um, it is being used as a weapon. And it is also being used as it's being used as a weapon, and it is also being twisted to turn someone into something that they are not at all. Because the one who is doing it truly does understand, but just is twisting it and making it a weapon. Hmm. So let us begin, please, please. Get your authorized version of the scripture. Please follow me along, word for word, verse by verse, of what we are going to be looking at today. 
Okay, please. Follow me along. Okay, keep an eye on me as where you follow me along, okay? I, that is good. I need that. You know, praise the Lord for like in the previous video I botched up about uh, what uh, a a meaning of the word countenance because first reference of countenance is when it's on to um, uh, Cain. It's like, why, are, why is that countenance fallen? Countenance meaning the physical thing. And a brother corrected me on that because... Uh, uh, words do have more than one meaning in Scripture. And the brother uh, corrected me on that. Praise the Lord for it, you know. So follow me along, okay? Follow me along, all right? Let us begin in the book of Esther. Let us begin in the book of Esther. This video is going to be a rebuke on to us husbands and to you wives. And you would be husbands and you apparently would be wives. Okay? There are those out there who have no necessity and who do not burn. Praise the Lord for that. Seriously. Honestly, look at me. Honestly, I wish, I wish I didn't have that. I wish I didn't have that burning. Okay? That burning. And it's, it's a twisted tactic. When someone, when you, when the issue of that burning comes up, and you we go to and you go to the scriptures for one of the reasons why you marry one of the reasons you, you see that one of okay there are several reasons why you marry okay if you marry for only one reason you're usually going to have a lot of problems okay and if you're uh, marrying just for the one physical reason uh, you're going to have problems regardless no matter what okay but, okay, physically, to be with your wife or with your husband physically in the marriage bed is honorable. Like it says in the book of Hebrews, the marriage bed is honorable, okay? When it comes between a husband and a wife in the marriage bed, anything is permissible, okay? I, very quickly, I, I am considering making this putting an age restriction on this i am considering that probably won't happen but i am considering that just if, as we go a little further okay i'm not going to get graphic or anything but just just so you know but anyway the marriage bed is undefiled okay so between a husband and a wife in the marriage bed anything is permissible okay anything all right it's undefiled between a husband and wife Okay, if you do not have that desire within you at all, okay, and that is a part, a, a part of a marriage, okay, you're better off not to get married. Because for you to find someone who has no desire, if the both of you have no desire, but yet you're going to be husband and wife, what's the point? You might say the thing of a help meet. Well, okay, a help meet. You don't need to be married for these people if you're if neither of you have burning or necessity, then there is no point in you being married for you to help one another and to if you have, you know, if you're both eunuchs, so to say, and have no desire, no burning, and have control of yourself like that, uh, then don't get married. That's one of the reasons that a man and a woman are to be married, okay? To negate that at all, you're not going to have a good marriage, okay? But let's start in Esther, all right? And you know this, but you don't want to accept it.
And being with the husband or with the wife, you do these things out of love, not at gunpoint. So, Esther, chapter 1, verses 10, on to the close of the chapter. On the seventh day, when the heart of the king was merry with wine, he commanded Mehuman, Bista, Harbona, Bigtha, and Abagatha, Zithar, and Carcass, the seven chamberlains that served in the presence of Ahasuerus the king, to bring Vashti, the queen, before the king with the crown royal, to shew the people and the princess her beauty, for she was fair to look on. Okay? So basically, King Ahasuerus, yes, Vashti was a trophy wife, obviously. And uh, as you read the book of Esther, uh, Esther uh, to this Ahasuerus, his wives were pretty much trophies in a way because uh, Esther says, I had not been called to come into the king for quite some time. Okay, This king Ahasuerus was a busy man, by the way. Okay, But Vashti was obviously a trophy wife. Okay, uh, Vashti did do her part. She made a part of this feast and whatnot. She did her part. Yes, but on to, you know, look at this. To bring Vashti, the queen, before the king with the crown royal to shew the people and the princes her beauty, for she was fair to look on. Okay? But the queen Vashti refused to come at the king's commandment by his, by his chamberlains. Therefore was the king very wroth, and his anger burned in him. Now, I am aware of the arguments that uh, there are those out there who will twist this to say that Vashti, and these usually tend to be uh, these arguments in a feministic type nature. Uh, they will uh, bring up arguments about, well, Queen Vashti was doing right because Ahasuerus was married with wine or something like that. Or, uh, you know, let it, or they'll go to Peter about let it not be the adornment and stuff like that. And, you know, you can understand those arguments, but the point being, okay, the point being, King Ahasuerus was king. He called the queen, okay, to come. She refused, okay? That in and of itself, no matter the feministic argument that these feministic <coughs> Christians will bring up to do a yea hath God said with this, that is besides the point. Fact is, the king said unto the queen, called the queen. Now, another argument is that he didn't come personally. And these feministic women, they pounce on that. He should have come personally. He was merry with wine or something like that. Okay? He shouldn't, you shouldn't be treating her like a trophy wife with the head bobble and everything. Okay? Black and white fact. Black and white fact. Either or, no middle ground, black or white. The king called for his wife through a chamberlain and she refused. Or the queen, excuse me, the queen to come and she refused. Okay? Let's continue. Then the king said to the wise men which knew the times, for so was the king's manner toward all that new law and judgment. And the next unto him was Karshena, Shatar, and Admatha, Tarshish, Merez, Marsena, and Memukhan, the seven princes of Persia and Medea, which saw the king's face, and which sat the first in the kingdom. What shall we do unto, queen Vashti, unto the queen Vashti according to the law? Because she hath not performed the commandment of the king Ahasuerus by the chamberlains. Okay? And yes, you can bring up the arguments about the uh, being under the law and all that kind of stuff. You can bring up those kind of arguments. Yes, you can. Um, black and white. Black and white. She was supposed to come when he called for her. Black and white. Okay? As king and queen. Okay? She was supposed to be submissive unto the king. Okay? All right? 
he, yes, yes, Ahasuerus was obviously treating her as a trophy wife. Yes, because scriptures say right there she was fair to look on. Yes, he was. Regardless of that fact, okay, she was supposed to do what the king said. And when you read the book of Esther, Ahasuerus, Ahasuerus, I don't think, was the brightest bulb in the box, the sharpest knife in the drawer. Okay, I really don't think he was. But overall, King Ahasuerus was a good king. And he did that which was right. He did. He was fair. He was just. He was. He was. Like I said, he, I don't think Ahasuerus was the sharpest knife in the drawer or the brightest bulb in the box. I don't think he was at all. But he did do that which was right. Okay? He did. He did. That must be mentioned about Ahasuerus. So when you get the feminists uh, looking to bash Ahasuerus, it's like, oh, wait, 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 wait. Wait, and we're, we're going to look at, we're going to look deeply into some of this stuff. Because when it comes down to it, A lot of you Christian women, you don't want to hear this. The man is the head over the woman. The man is the head over the wife. Okay? I know you don't, some of you women don't like to hear that, but that's the truth. And then when you have one who wants to be in a, a seat of authority, while claiming to be a helpmeet, uh, no, that's a, that's a usurper. That's a supplanter. Man, God, man, woman, children. Not God, woman, children, pet, man. You feminist. Okay? No, no, no. Let's continue. Let's continue. Okay? Verse 16. And Memucan answered before the king and the princes. Fast. Now look at this. Look at this. Okay? Monkey see, monkey do. And then you can answer before the king and the princes. Vashti the queen hath not done wrong to the king only, but also to all the princes and to all the people that are in all the provenances of the king of the king Ahasuerus. Why is that? Let's read. For this deed of the queen shall come abroad unto all women so that they shall despise their husbands in their eyes when it shall be reported. The king Ahasuerus commanded Vashti the queen to be brought in before him, but she came not. They get the head bobble. <laughs> well, Vashti didn't come to the king, so why should I do anything that you ask of me? With the head bobbles. Like, you know, hold your head still. Okay? So, the, the women would see, oh, well, Vashti did that. Well, I, I, I don't want to do that. I'm not going to do that. Because, hey, the queen got away with it. So, uh, so why can't I? Bad influence. Kind of like a Jezebel type, in a way. Okay? And, and like I said, uh, yes, Vashti was obviously a trophy wife. But the point is, I know this is hard for some of you, you women. And you men out there who use this as a thing of bravada. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good luck with that, pal. Um, the man is above the woman. In Christ, we are all equal. In Christ, we are all equal, yes. Yes, we are. Salvifically, we are equal. But a man is not a woman, nor is a woman a man. Okay? Man was first formed. Then Eve. Eve was made for Adam, not Adam for Eve, and definitely not <coughs> for Steve. Okay? All right? And yes, because of you women, you bear children. Yes! But see, again, woman of man. That's what woman means. Okay? <laughs> 
Veiled feminism is a very deadly thing. No matter how it's excused, it's a very deadly thing and a very dangerous thing. Okay? Let's continue. Verse 18. Likewise shall the ladies of Persia and Medea say this day unto all the king's princes, We have heard of the deed of the queen. Thus shall there arise too much contempt and wrath. If it please the king, let there go a royal commandment from him, and let it be written among the laws of the Persians and the Medes, that it be not altered. That Vashti come no more before King Ahasuerus, and let the king give her royal estate unto another that is better than she. Hence, opening the way for Esther, because of uh, wicked Haman and that kind of stick, or Haman, whatever, okay? Okay? And when the king's decree which he shall make shall be published throughout all his empire, for it is great, all the wives shall give to their husbands honor, both to great and small. And the same pleased the king and the princes. And the king did according to the word of Memucan. For he sent letters into all the king's providences, into every providence, according to the writing thereof, and to, and to every people after their language, that every man should bear rule in his own house, and that it should be published according to the language of every people. Well, that was only in Persia. feminist hmm. God woman child pet man no God man woman child pet doesn't even get into the equation okay so you might be saying well that's that's how it was for in Persia mm -hmm. let's go to Genesis to the beginning Genesis chapter 2. Now, you feminists out there, um, what can I tell you? What can I tell you? <laughs> what can I tell you? Genesis chapter 2, verses 18 on to the close of the chapter. That was only for the Persians that uh, men are to have, be the head of their house. Genesis chapter 2, verses 18 on to verse 25. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the woman should be alone. I will make her and help meet for her. Oh, excuse me! Excuse me! And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. It's not good for men to be alone. It's not good for men... There are those out there, and we're going to look at this, who can be alone. The, those are very rare. I actually know of a brother here locally who uh, I haven't spoke to for a couple, quite a while, but um, is at peace with being alone. Okay? But it says, and the Lord God said, it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. Help meet for him. Excuse me, brethren. <laughs> Speaking of, uh, help me. My wife, I didn't tell her that I was uh, doing this. <laughs> She's like, what, what are you talking to? <laughs> uh, I'm in our, our brother Alexander's room. So <laughs> anyway, there are some things that we need to remember here too about verse 18. Number one. This is in the dispensation of the Garden of Eden, the very first dispensation in Scripture. This is before the fall. This is when man was perfect and had a pristine, perfect relationship with the Lord. That is to be taken into an account. Yes, and we'll see this, okay? And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help me for him. Help me to help him out physically, but also in areas of procreation, okay? So let's continue. 
And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every fowl of the air and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name of it. And Adam gave names to all cattle and to the fowl of the air and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found and help meet for him. There are perverts out there. There are perverts out there who will come to verses 19 and 20 and animals and man, and we will leave it at that. When you come across some of these people, you rebuke them sharply. You rebuke them sharply and add a little fire in with that rebuke because that is perverse. Okay. I'm going to, I'm going to uh, presume that you are of an adult mind. And even if you are, especially with these kids today, if even if you are of an adolescent mind, there are perverts out there that will come to verse 19 and to verse 20 and twist it in a perverse way, if you know what I'm talking about. And you do. Okay? So let's continue. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. Because she was taken, and this is what the word woman means. She shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. That's what woman means. Out of man. Of man. Okay? You feminists out there, you, you can't, you can deny this all you want. When you're standing before him at the great white throne of judgment, let's see how your little head bobble is going to go then. Okay. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother and shall cleave unto his wife and they shall be one flesh. Now, the one flesh thing. Yes, a reference unto the physical physicalities of laying with your wife, but also one flesh in other areas, okay, of being like-minded, okay? You hurt my wife, you're hurting me, okay? You're talking to your my wife, you're talking to me. You're talking to me, my wife is also there present. Uh, that's the way it is mostly anyway, okay? We're one flesh, not just in the marriage bed, but outside in everyday, daily, seemingly mundane things. We are one flesh. We are one body, okay? All right? So one flesh, yes, is a reference onto the physical nature of the marriage bed, but it is far more than that, okay? And on that, on that, look at, uh, uh, what was this, Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 and 28. What were some reasons? What are some of the reasons why you marry, okay? What are some of the reasons? Well, number one. Genesis chapter 1, verses 26, and on to verse 28. And as far as being made in the image of God, there will be a link in the description video, uh, description, uh, here, let me write it down so I don't forget, bear with me, image of God, there will be a description, uh, a link for a video in the description box where we talk about that, okay, we're not going to go off on that juicy rabbit trail this morning, okay. Uh, Genesis chapter 1, verses 26 on to verse 28. And God said, Let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So God created man in his image, and in the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful, and multiply, and replenish the earth, and subdue it, and have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. 
So, be fruitful and multiply. Be fruitful. Have a lot of kids. Have a lot of children. So, one of the reasons for marriage, procreation, children. Yes, obviously. First and foremost, first and foremost, above all that, above all that, and the Lord God said it is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. Okay? A help meet. Don't worry, we're going to be getting to 1 Peter chapter 3 here in a little bit. Don't get ahead of me. Okay? So, number one, to be a help meet. And see, feminism, feministic Christianity, with their women who preach and teach who ought not to do so. Okay? Usurping authority of, over the man. Okay? And then blurring the line, the distinction between instructing and teaching. Very clever. Very clever. Okay? And to my shame, I have been a proponent of such in the past. I cannot. It's, I can't. I can't. I can't. Scripture is right. Scripture is right. Okay? There are things that women can do. Absolutely. Uh, we, we talked about this in the Woman of God videos, which will also be in the description box as well. Okay? There are things that women can do. But when you take the place of the man in teaching... Or and trying to say you're not teaching, but rather instruct. Eh, that's a line that shouldn't be blurred and isn't blurred that you shouldn't be crossing. And many have been warned. Oh, these women who do this have been warned. But yeah, have God said, well, there's well, that I. okay, okay. Look online. Look online. We've addressed this in uh, talking about the charismatics. Okay? So, to be a help meet for the man and for the man to be also for the woman a covering. Okay? We talked about that in the Woman of God video. Not going to talk about that here. Okay? So, it's a mutual partnership. They are one flesh. Okay? My wife is my own body. And I'm going to take care of my wife as I take care of myself. My body is my wife's, and she's going she's gonna to take care of her body as she take care of herself. See, that's the way it works, okay? But to be a helpmeet, and also to procreate, to have children, okay? Okay? And God blessed them, and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply, and replenish the earth and subdue it. And have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. Okay? So that's two of the reasons. Okay? That's two of the reasons. Two reasons why marriage. Okay? We're going to look at the other one here in a little bit. Okay? But, like I said, when we looked in Genesis chapter 2, verses 18 on to verse 25, okay? Let's, read, let's continue reading again in uh, Genesis chapter 2. Uh, we stopped off at verse 23. Therefore shall a man leave his father and his mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh. And they were both naked, the man and his wife, and were not ashamed. They were both naked because this was before sin was in the world. And also the teaching there is, uh, between a husband and a wife, um, uh, you can walk around in your birthday suit all day. Granted, have the, the blinds closed. But there should be no shame between a husband and a wife walking around each other naked. Okay? There shouldn't be. Shouldn't be ashamed or afraid or blush. I know some do. I get that. But, um, you, you know, walk around in your birthday suit around your wife or vice versa. That's okay. Okay? That's okay. But you do got to remember that this is before sin. Okay? This is when everything was pristine. All right? 
So to be a helpmeet and also to replenish. So marriage, so that a man will not be alone and that a man could be a covering for a woman. And that also, if that's possible, children, okay? Okay? Now, let's get to this thing about touching on the, well, the, you know, that was only for Persia about how the man is supposed to be over the woman. Now, Genesis chapter 3. Verses, uh, let's, let's read verses 15 on to verse 19. Day hath God said, Satan comes along as the serpent, okay? Goes to the woman, which is a telltale thing of how Satan operates. You go after the woman. They, he goes after the man. But you go after the, the woman who can use seduction, who can use the senses, who know how to look a certain way, act a certain way, do their head a certain way, okay? Hey, men could do that on to women too, but see, the point is, Satan goes after the woman, okay? You want to destroy the household? Go to the woman. Look at what feminism has done, okay? Look at what these feministic Christian women are doing, okay? Okay? If these Christian women, if they were really Christian women, shh, you'd be silent. You'd be silent. You'd be silent. Okay? I, in the past, I, in the past, have supported and have even encouraged I was wrong. I was wrong. There are things that you as a sister in Christ can do. And there is a way that you can do it. Yes, there is. But for a woman to take the place of a man in teaching, that is sin. And to blur, purposely blur instruction and teaching. Things that are different are not the same. This is true. This is true. This is true. But see, in that instruction, a woman still elevates herself above that of a man. That's dangerous. And I have in the past, I have, I have in the past been supportive of sisters doing such. I was wrong. I was wrong. And I confess that fault. I confess that fault. You know, you look at Gail Ripplinger. Her book was, was spot on. But um, I, I watched her lecture on the Bible version issues. The information was good. It was really good. It was really, really good. Not to mention she's also mixed up with Kent Hovind. <laughs> Warning. But, and I had even, in the past, have said to sisters, it's like, well, hey, there's Gail Ripplinger. And then the Lord's like, uh, Brad. Brad, is my word true? Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. I, I'm repenting, okay? I'm repenting publicly, that whereas I might have done so in the past, and I have, I was wrong, and I should not have done so. I was wrong. Please forgive me of my sin for doing so. I repent of that. Because it could lead to pride, it could lead to contention, and then you can have a woman trying to be as a Jezebel calling herself a prophetess, teaching men, and trying to say, well, I know better, more than, and it becomes a pride issue. Okay? But, Genesis chapter 3, verses 15, on to, what are we reading? Verse 19. Okay? Garden of Eden. 
Satan goes to the woman. Yea, hath God said. And it's like, oh, that looks good. It's good for food. Hey, it'll make me wise. See, she was even wiser than her husband because she is like, look, here. It'll make us wise. And then their eyes were open and they knew that they were, they were naked. Shame came in because they had done what God had said not to do, hence bringing in sin. Okay? So, what happens? God curses the serpent to crawl around on his belly. That's why snakes have little holes in their rear end because they once had legs. Okay? You have, and I know you guys who are atheists and evolutionists, you use like, you're right. It's like, yeah, the, the scripture is right. Not me. The scripture is right. Okay? Okay? But the Lord curses the serpent to crawl on his belly to eat dust and wear dust. Then he turns to the woman. Uh, wait, 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 yeah, verse 15 on it. Okay. And this is what he's talking about. Um, this is the very first um, prophecy of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, God manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, okay? And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. This tells us that before this, before the fall in the Garden of Eden, um, childbearing was a lot more easier on you women. Okay? A lot more easier. Okay? Oh, and you... Ladies? Yes. Thanks, Adam! Yeah. The fault did lie on Adam. And what did Adam do? Instead of taking... When the Lord, who knew what happened... The Lord gave him the chance to man up. What did he do? He acted like a modern man. The woman that you gave to be with me did eat of the tree. And yeah, I did eat. Okay? It's modern man for you. All right? But before that, before the fall, childbearing unto the woman I said, uh, unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. Before the fall, it was different, obviously. And thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over you. Rule over you. Now see, you get lesbians who don't want a man, but yet. <laughs> this, and a video on sodomy will be coming here eventually. Um, one has to take the male role in one form, okay? It, 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 it happens. You know, I uh, yesterday, while out doing what I was supposed to do, um, I saw a bumper sticker that said, alpha female. It's like, oh yeah, I bet you are, okay? Even in a sodomite, female sodomite relationship, one always takes the male dominating role in one way or another, usually in their perverse bed. But one always takes, I've, I've known several, I have actually have known um, female sodomites who know what Leviticus says and knows what the scripture says and says, well, it says man shall, shall not lay with mankind. It doesn't say anything about women. Okay? See, women can be, uh, women are a lot smarter, brethren, than we give them credit for. Be aware of that. Be aware of that. Okay? But right there, this tells us that before the fall, marriage between a man and his wife, the dynamic was different. Yes, you are to we are you are to be a help meet for us, and we are to be your covering. But that help meet had a totally different dynamic when there was no sin involved. Okay, help being a help meet still applies. Yes, it does. But the dynamic is different because before there was no sin, now there is, and because there is. And thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Okay? Man came first. 
Adam was still to be in, still to be the head even before sin came in. Prove it to you. Absolutely. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened on to the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Okay? Now, that doesn't mean that when your wife comes to you, it's like, uh, you know, you sh maybe shouldn't be doing that. It's like, doing, you know, let's say you're eating something bad or something, and your wife's like, uh, you know, you probably shouldn't be eating that. Tastes good. She's like, honey, look at the thing. It's like, oh, oh, it's got, ba it got dead babies in it. <clears throat> okay. All right. That doesn't mean that you as a wife, can't give your husband advice or even, you know, even help him along with decisions. But, but, see, what Eve did after the temptation was she took the leading role and gave onto her husband to eat. And Adam should have been, okay, should have been like, Eve, what have you done? Splat! Get that. What have you done? What have you done? He didn't do that. The arguments are that he ate so he could die with his wife, and that is valid, but also that there was deception. That there was de deception, which I think is also valid. Both of them obviously must have known what this fruit was, or what this what, what it looked like. So Adam could not claim ignorance when he ate it. Okay? He couldn't. So. But nonetheless, even before the fall, Adam was to be the head over the wife. Verse 17 proves it. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake, and sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. One second, brethren. Thorns also and thistles shall I bring, verse 18. Thorns also and thistles shall I bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat of the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground. For out of it wast thou taken, for dust thou art, and unto dust shalt thou return. So see, at the very beginning, even before sin, before sin was brought into the world, in the creation, in the Garden of Eden, and the very disp first dispensation before sin was entered in, okay? Man was to be the head over the wife, okay? And Eve, who took the leading role in that sin, hence, so see, it wasn't relegated just to, just to the Persians, okay? The man is to be over the wife, okay? So, but also now we have seen to be a helpmeet and also for children to, for a reason for marriage. Let's look at another reason here in Genesis, okay? In Genesis, Genesis chapter 26, verses 6 and 9. Okay? Talking about Isaac. And Isaac dwelt in Gerar. And the men of the place asked him of his wife. And he said, She is my sister. For he feared to say, She is my wife. Lest, said he, the men of the place should kill me for Rebekah, because she was fair to look upon. He learned that from his daddy, Abraham, who lied about his wife, Sarai, Sarah. Okay? All right. And it came to pass when he had been there a long time that Abimelech, king of the Philistines, looked out at a window and saw, and behold, Isaac was sporting, doesn't say laying with, says sporting with Rebekah, his wife. Sporting. Fooling around. Hmm? Maybe kissing a little bit. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, we did do a video on sporting, on sport. Uh, are ye not entertained? Okay, I think that's what it was called. But sporting, sporting. 
Hmm. What is it? It's sport? Well, the word is sporting, but um, fooling around, showing affection, that kind of thing with his wife, which we as husbands and you as wives can do with your wife or with your husband. Okay? So, pleasure, enjoyment of sporting, being one flesh, being with one another. I get enjoyment kissing my wife, touching my wife. Okay? All right? So sporting. Hmm. And Abimelech called Isaac and said, Behold, of a surety she is thy wife. And how saidest thou she is my sister? And Isaac said unto him, Because I said, lest I die for her. Hmm. But you see this thing of sporting. Hmm. Sporting. Let's go to where you all were waiting for. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 7. Okay? So, to be a helpmeet and to be a covering, the helpmeet unto us, the man, and to be a covering unto the woman. Okay? But, and also for children, yes, to be fruitful and multiply. Sporting. Hmm, having pleasure with one's wife. Hmm, pleasure. That's laughing and giggling and stuff. That doesn't include the physical act. Hmm? Right. Now, go to, come on. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, we are going to be reading verses 1 on to verse 9. Okay? And this, and we will be looking in Matthew chapter 19. Okay? And we will be looking in Matthew chapter 19. Praise the Lord that you may be one of those who does not burn and does not have any necessity and can compose themselves. I wish. I prayed. <laughs> prayed. I don't pray for it anymore, obviously. I wish I could be like that. Like Paul, who could compose himself, who had no desire, who had no burning. Hence, he didn't seek a wife because he didn't have that. Now, you'll right away, these people will look, well, that's, then, then that's the only reason. No, that's one of the reasons, okay? But see, these all work together. Okay? Okay. Here's what you don't want to understand. There are there are three aspects to marriage. Yes, there are more than that. Okay. But there are three main scriptural aspects to marriage. To be in help meet and to be a covering for children. And to because of burning. Okay? Burning. If you try to have one and keep the others, you're not going to have a success, successful marriage, okay? If you try to have one and not the other two, you're not going to have a successful marriage, okay? If you try to have two and not the third, okay? You're not going to have a successful marriage, okay? Paul, who had no desire, no burning, if you are one like that, it is unreasonable, illogical, and I will go to say even unscriptural for you to desire to be a wife or a husband if you have no desire. Because you might not have that in the marriage bed. You're lacking one of the aspects of marriage. Okay? All right? Hence... Don't get married. If you don't have, if you want, if you have a woman, okay, if you're friends with a woman, if you want, hey, if you live together and you're, you're not intimate or anything like that, it looks bad. Uh, hence, I would not recommend that, okay? But if you don't have any desire and he doesn't have any desire either, don't get married, okay? Because you get married to be a helpmeet and to be a covering. Okay, for children. If that's not in the equation, fine. But, okay? All right? And you say, well, Brad, you can have children. I, you're right. I cannot have children. But her children are my children via marriage. Okay? Also, we have spiritual children. Okay? All right? So, yes. I married a woman... Who had children. Hence, I have children. Okay? So, that aspect with us 
still applies, see, okay? Okay? And, you know, there are some that don't have uh, kids. That's fine. But there again, as in regards of those of the church of the living God, okay, they usually have those who are their spiritual children. Paul never had children, but he called Timothy his son Timothy. He was his spiritual son, okay? Brought him up in the faith, okay? That, that counts, okay? That, yes, yes, okay? Onto the eunuch, they'll have many sons and daughters, okay? How can a eunuch have a son or a daughter if they're not within the marriage bed, spiritually? Hmm? Okay? See, that's how that works, okay? All right? But then if you want to be married but yet have, okay, you have to have no children and not even have anything to do with the marriage bed at all? Okay? Ah, uh, ah. Uh. See, my wife's children, even though some of, most of, uh, both of them, no, not both of them, uh, it's like, well, Brad, you're only a couple years younger, uh, older than I am. It's like, yeah, I know. <laughs> I know. Um, I am still, by, you know, by being my wife, uh, uh, husband to my wife, I am still, you know, not a, you know, an actual biological father, but fatherly onto them. See? See that, how that works? See how that works? Okay? See? Okay, and there are those who are out there who cannot have children that are married. Yes, yes, okay, yes, that comes into play. Yes, but see, when talking about the marriage bed, okay, and you're not going to get away from this. You can deflect, but you're not going to get away from this. A marriage involves the marriage bed. What about those who can't? There are exceptions like that. Yes, there are. I know of a man who is paralyzed. I, I called him before quadriplegic. I get that confused. From the waist down, nothing works on him. And he's married and has never been with his wife. Okay? She is more of a companion more than a wife onto him. Okay? But she does the things like that he can't because of it, stuff like that. Okay? So there are exceptions. Yes, there are. Yes, there are, okay? But these three things encompass a healthy, godly, successful marriage, okay? And yeah, sure, I guess you can have one and, uh, you know, you can have be lacking one. But the conditions are extreme, okay? The conditions are extreme and rare, okay? And rare. But if you are of healthy nature and not paralyzed, okay? Paralyzed, that's an extreme thing, okay? Or if you don't have something wrong within you that you cannot physically actually have children, okay? Okay? Those are things, yes. But if you are healthy and just choose not to want to be in the marriage bed and want to be married and demand that of your spouse, uh-uh, don't get married. Don't get married. Because why? 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 1 under verse 9. Now concerning the things whereof you wrote unto me, it is good for a man not to touch a woman. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, let every man have his own wife, and let every woman have her own husband. So to be a help me, children, okay? You can't biologically have children, okay? You can have spiritual children, okay? You can nurture up other uh, other kids, other people younger than you in the Lord, okay? Okay? You as a wife who can't have children, you can be uh, washing the saints' feet, serving the church of the living God, okay? That way, yes, yes, okay? But right here. Nevertheless, to avoid fornication, fornication, relations outside the marriage bed, let every man have his own wife and let every woman have her own husband. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence and likewise also the wife unto the husband. 
The wife hath not power of her own body, but the husband, but the husband, and likewise also the husband hath not power over his own body, but the wife. Okay? Defraud ye not one for the other, except it be with consent for a time. Okay? That ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer, and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. Come together again. So, defraud ye not one another, except it be for consent, unless it be with consent for a time. Why? That ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer, and come together again, that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. You can't hold water, that you can't control yourself. Okay? But I speak this by permission and not of commandment. About uh, verse 5? No, about verse 7. For I would that all men were even as I myself. See, someone who wants to uh, justify getting married, but yet refusing, refusing the marry, marriage bed. They'll go to verse 6. But I speak this by permission and not by commandment. So see, we can, we can still be married and refuse. Not that you are not physically able. Not that you cannot physically have children, but outright refuse the marriage bed. Those will see, Paul said that's by his permission and not by commandment. So see, that's, no, verse 6 is before what verse? Verse 7. What is he talking about for verse 6? But I speak this by permission and not by, of commandment. Verse 7. For I would that all men were even as I myself. See, Verse 6 is before verse 7. Okay, very clever. But every man hath his proper gift of God, one after this manner and another after that. I say, therefore, to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I. And there you go. Okay? Quit trying to ra rational, rationalize or rational way, whatever, you getting married if you have absolutely no desire to be with your husband. You might want children, but yet you refuse the marriage bed. And then when someone, when you make them know there's someone who might have shown an interest and you tell them, it's like, well, that's never going to happen. And then the man's like, well, I burn, okay? Now, granted, I, that, and that's, see, that's not a lie. That's not a lie. You're twisting to slander somebody. That's not a lie. See, that's three parts of a marriage. To be a helpmeet and to be a covering for children and also for burning, Okay? That's not the main part of marriage. We've, we've already established that. But that is an integral part of marriage. Okay? And in extreme circumstances, like with the one brother that I mentioned, who doesn't work from the waist down. Okay? All right? Um, that's an extreme circumstance. Okay? Um, brother couldn't even, if he wanted to, with... Medical help, okay? So th th that's enough, okay? That's an extreme circumstance, okay? That's rare, okay? Could two people be husband and wife, yet both refuse the marriage bed and both have no children? You're better off not getting married. But see, when you are in a situation where you refuse the marriage bed, and then the other, and then the man's like, well, okay, yeah, yeah, that is not the most important part. But see, that is a part of marriage. And if you're, you're absolutely refusing that, that that's a cold fish, ipso facto, not at all ever, then no, then let's not talk. And then you're going to twist it and say that he's lying, that that was his, no, no, no. That's not lying. You're twisting something and you know exactly what you're doing. 
You know exactly. You know what we're looking at. You know it exactly. You know it as good as I do. And you are twisting that. You're twisting it. Repent. Repent of it. That's wicked. That is not conduct becoming of someone of the church of the living God. Stop it. Because you are the one who is lying. For someone to say, okay, hey, you made a mistake. Drop it and let it go. But no, dredging up to slander a brother and won't let it go. Won't let it go. Absolutely refusing the marriage bed. Okay? Then, hey, you that's fine. You don't, you refuse the marriage, then get out of your head being married. Get out of your head being married. Get it out of your head. Okay? For I would that all men were even as I myself. But every man hath his proper, proper gift of God, one after this manner and another after that. I say therefore to the unmarried and widows, it is good for them if they abide even as I. But if they cannot contain, let them marry, for it is better to marry than to burn. Okay? Well, then you, then you twist that. It's like, well, that's the only reason why someone's... No. No. That's one of them. Okay? That's one of them. If you're both a fit body, don't have medical stuff that prevents you from having children like I do and like my wife does, okay, that's a different story, okay? But if you are a healthy body and just absolutely refusing, and then the one's like, well, you're absolutely refusing, then no, I, I'm not, no, hey, hey. All, all peace and all, all things. And then you twist it. It's like, oh, you're lying. You're a filthy pervert. You're all about, no, no, no. You're not that dense in your head. You're not. You know what you're doing. You're smarter than that. And you're doing this deliberately. Stop it. Stop it. Stop it. For it is better to marry than to burn. Okay? It is better to marry than to burn. And, and, okay? Verse 7. For I would that all men were even as I myself, but every man hath his proper gift of God, one after this manner and after that manner. Let me check the reference. Yep, and this one gives the reference. For Matthew chapter 19. Let's go there, please. Matthew chapter 19. Verses 3 under verse 12. Okay? Verses 3 under verse 12. The Pharisees also came unto him, tempting him, and saying unto him, Is it lawful to put for a man to put away his wife for every cause? And he answered and said unto them, Have ye not read that? Have ye not read that he which made them at the beginning made them male and female? And said, for this cause, we already looked at this, shall a man leave father and mother and shall cleave to his wife, and they twain shall be one flesh? Wherefore they are no more twain but one flesh? What therefore God hath joined together, let not man put asunder. They say unto him, Why did Moses then command to give a writing of divorcement and put her away? Valid question, right? See, in the beginning, it was one man and one woman. People like to bring up, well, what about the kings? Well, what about the uh, one man, one wife? You read about that in Timothy and in Titus. Uh, must be the husband of one wife uh, and stuff like that. Well, it's just a bishop. Let's shut up, okay? Having more than one wife is not good, okay? God allowed it. Yes, he did. Yes, he did. Was God for it? No. There is a lot of things that God is not for, but he allows people to do. Isn't there? Yes. And every single, even you devils have to give credence to that. That there are things that God doesn't want people to do, but he allows them to do it anyway. 
Even you devils have to acknowledge that. Okay? Look yourself in the mirror. Okay? But, you know, you, they give it, well, David, and of course, Solomon. Um, and who knows how many sons and daughters. Totally. Solomon had over a thousand wives. And if he had a, a son or a daughter with just one of them, wow. But see, the reason why kings did that was to ensure they had a legacy, an heir. That's why also you read that in, um, some, in the books of the uh, Kings and Chronicles about how the king coming to power would exterminate the f uh, former king's uh, bloodline so he wouldn't have any rebels coming up against him. But they would do that have multitude of children to, you know, to have their legacy, their reign, their dynasty, and stuff like that, okay? But what our Lord says, that was not the original intention from the beginning. Uh, from the beginning, God wanted to be amongst us. But it's not like that now. He's amongst us, those of us who are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, okay? Okay? All right? But, let's continue. He saith unto them, Moses, because of the hardness of your hearts, suffered you to put away your wives. But from the beginning it was not so. I say unto you, Whosoever shall put away his wife, except it be for fornication, and shall marry another, committeth adultery. And whoso marrieth her, which is put away, committeth adultery. Some of these lovely devils have attacked me. It's like, well, you're, ma you're married to a woman who had two husbands. Both of my wife's former husbands are dead and in hell. Okay? My wife was not put away. Her former husbands died. Okay? So you go pound some sand. Okay? All right? My wife was not divorced. She was not put away. Okay? She was not put away away and both her husbands are dead okay and in hell so you go pound some sand all right so his disciples say unto him if the case of the man be so with the wife with his wife it is not good to marry paul kind of hints to that but what does our lord say here but he said unto them all men cannot receive the same, save they to whom it is given. For there are some eunuchs which were so born from their mother's womb. And there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men, uh, and, uh, you know, born eunuchs from their mother's womb, uh, born virgin, you're born a virgin, and uh, from childhood up, uh, I know there's a brother in Spain who I hope um, is still maintaining the course of being a virgin, keeping himself pure. Um, uh, praise the Lord if he has. But that's one uh, an example of someone, a uh, eunuch born from his mother's womb. Okay? And there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men. Actual, and you look, and you can look in this in uh, Chinese history of how they would sit in a chair and certain things were exposed and someone would come, they'd smoke a little opium and then it is, okay? An actual physical thing, okay? And there are some eunuchs which made themselves eunuchs of men, okay? And there are some eunuchs which were made eunuchs of men, excuse me, and there be eunuchs which have made themselves eunuchs for the kingdom of heaven's sake. Kingdom of heaven's sake. The thousand year reign of our Lord Jesus Christ, the kingdom of heaven. Hmm. He that is able to receive it, let him receive it. And being made a eunuch by men, like you've taken it upon yourself, like Paul's like, hey, I, 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 I don't have, you know, and I, I wish. <laughs> so does my wife. They wish that personally that I didn't have that burning. Okay. That was one of the reasons why I married. So then, with the arguments of trying to slander somebody, then you could say, well, then that's the only reason, then you're a pervert, Brad, blah, 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 blah. Hmm. Yeah, right? Yeah. yeah. Look, listen. 
You don't have any desire for that. Praise the Lord. Seriously, praise the Lord. Drop it then. Okay? Drop it. Okay? You, you want children. Okay? Go ahead and adopt one. Go ahead. That's Mordecai, you know, Mordecai adopted um, Esther. Okay? Go ahead. Go ahead. But if you are a eunuch and you are made a eunuch by yourself, if you are a eunuch and you are going to demand that a husband or a wife that you are married to be also a eunuch, don't get married. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. What's the point? What's the point? Okay? What's the point? Help me covering. Okay. That could be done without marriage. It can. It can. You know, you can help a godly man with uh, information and doing whatever. And, by, and the, the man of God can be a covering for you. Absolutely. Absolutely. Children, not married, don't want the marriage bed, go ahead and adopt one. Go ahead. But that is off limits. Always, eternally. And at your dictate, man Oh, yes, us, or woman. See, it's a sin to manipulate and withhold yourself from your wife or from your husband. You can't, you can't get away from this. What Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 7. You're not going to get away from it. You can change the narrative and deflect, chaff and redirect, okay, Nice tactic, by the way. Um, verse uh, 3 on to verse 5. Let the husband render unto the wife due benevolence, and likewise also the wife unto the husband. The wife hath not power of her own body, but the husband. And likewise also the husband hath not power of his own body, but the wife. Defraud ye not one the other, except it be with consent for a time. Why? That ye may give yourselves to fasting and prayer and come together again that Satan tempt you not for your incontinency. Okay? Now, if that is not anywhere in the, between the two of you, don't get married. Don't get married. Because there's not one of the three there at all. Okay? The head covering thing and uh, to be a help me, sure, you don't need to be really married for that. You don't. Do you? You know, the uh, people who are head covering for a, a sister or something like that, they're not married, but that sister can also help with uh, information and whatnot. Fine, okay? Fine, okay? Children, biologically, you're not able to, but yet you're married. That's a different, that's just, that's the exception, not the rule, okay? That's the, ex if I were able, and if my wife were able, we have already said, we would have already had children. Going on 10 years, we would have had children. Absolutely. Absolutely. I would have liked to have had children. But because of my past, I believe, is why the Lord has made it so I cannot have children. Okay? But me being married to my wife, her children are my children. See how that works? Okay? And plus, there are some of you youngins out there who are spiritually children to us. Okay? See how that works? But an integral part... See, and that's something that some of you don't understand or don't want to understand. See, people get married nowadays because of lust. Only this. It's Marriage is obviously a lot deeper than that. Okay? A whole lot deeper than that. Okay? If you just get married for one single purpose, you're going to have a bad marriage. Okay? You're going to have a bad marriage. Just one purpose? Two? Just two? Three? Okay? All what encompasses a marriage? Uh, can't have children biologically? That's the exception. Okay? Physically unable actually unable to be in the marriage bed. That's the exception. 
my dear brother that's married to his wife who cannot for, because he's dead from the waist down. Okay? That's the exception. Okay? That's the exception. But when you're healthy and everything's working and you just refuse that, don't get married because it would be a sin for you to demand that your wife or your husband be as you and yet expect to have a godly marriage. And see, the marriage bed which is undefiled, okay? And hey, that's fair game for you and your wife, for you and your husband, okay? Hey, it's fair game. The physical aspect of marriage is an extension of the love that is between a husband and a wife, okay? You be in the marriage bed because you love your husband or your wife. You want to pleasure them. You want to be with them, okay? It's not a thing of a necessity as a gunpoint, okay? All right? All right? That is something that some of you don't understand. And hey, it's obvious that some of you don't want to understand that. Good for you. Ser seriously. Mwah. Praise the Lord. Get the thing of marriage out of your head then. Okay? Well, that's what I'm supposed to do. Then you need to go to the Lord and pray to him and see if he can't work out that thing that's in you that is making you that's off limits no matter who it is. Okay? Then you need to pray to the Lord about that. Otherwise, drop it. Okay? Drop it. And remember, this is not the only reason to be married. It's not. Okay? I got help meet, head covering. Children. And to keep and because of burning, okay? Alright? Alright? Okay? If you get married for only one reason, you're going to have a bad marriage. If you get married for only two reasons, okay, for only two reasons, you're going to have a bad marriage. Uh, the brother and the sister, the brother who is dead from uh, Brother Theodore. Sorry, brother. Sorry. But they both say if he could they would <laughs> okay so that desire was there but it's not physically capable okay the desire is there for children but not physically that the that is the exception okay that is the exception when you are of able body and just refusing and yet wanting to be a husband or a wife don't get married man woman don't get married don't get married do what Paul says. Remain a virgin. If you are a virgin, stay at it. If you got no desire, praise the Lord. And you know, there's nothing wrong with that. But don't, well, I should be. Well, you don't want to do what's required of a husband or of a wife. Then, dude, stop wasting your time. Okay? And for you to refuse one aspect of that, and then to turn it around and call someone a liar that say, well, that's all you're about. No, you know better. You are purposely twisting that to slander and attack. Okay? You get it. But you're putting off that you don't get it. Why are you doing that? Why are you doing that? Fortunately, I think I do know why. Ephesians. Ephesians. Chapter 5. Verses 22 on to verse 20, uh, 33. Okay? Ephesians chapter 5, verses 22 on to verse 33. Wives. Submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. Okay? You claim to love the Lord, and if you are going to be married, 
in a marriage onto a godly husband or onto a godly wife. Um, as a godly wife, um, you love the Lord, right? You are to, uh, what does it say? Submit yourselves unto your husband as unto the Lord. Because the husband is the head. Okay? Not you. And for you to manipulate and control through that, the bed, that's wicked. That's evil. And you men... Oh, that's not relegated to the uh, to the ladies, brethren. Yeah. Oh, don't worry, sisters. We 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 ain't innocent in those areas either, are we, men? Yeah. Yeah. Remember, your your body belongs to your your wife. Okay. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church. And he is the savior of the body. Scripture teaches God, man, woman, children. Feminism teaches God, woman, children, pet, husband, man. Okay? Your feminism or your machoism comes out in the way you behave. And, you know, you don't want a man ruling over you? That's fine. Don't get married. Don't get married. You don't want to be bound to the ball and chain proverbially? Don't get married. Okay? Let's continue. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in some things. In everything. Now, that doesn't mean like a conspiracy to go bring down a building or something. Or a conspiracy to murder or something like that. That's not what that means, okay? That's not what that means, all right? In everything, you know? Even if it's like, oh, I don't want to. And it's not just talking about the marriage bed, okay? The wife is supposed to be on to, uh, into, in submission unto her husband. And we are to love her as our own flesh, Okay? Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it. I would die for my wife. And this is the good argument for where Adam chose to die with Eve because he gave himself for his wife. Okay? That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish, so ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Because we're one flesh. And this is not just in context to the marriage bed. One flesh encompasses far more than just a marriage bed, okay? For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even so as the Lord the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall be joined unto his wife, and they too shall be one flesh. Submitting unto the husband, the husband dying for the wife. Okay? This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife, even as himself, and the wife see that she reverence her husband. And to be quite honest with you, if the demand in your marriage is that is never going to happen, uh, you're not reverencing uh, your husband, and the husband is not loving himself. Because that's a part of it. Hey, like I said, if you don't burn, praise the Lord, then Shut up about marriage. Okay? Shut up about marriage. Go on doing what you're doing. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. You don't have to deal with that stuff, man. Praise the Lord. But since you don't burn, shh about marriage. Okay? And and also, too, this thing about the usurping authority. Well, one second, bro. Okay, sorry about that. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 1 on to verse 3. Remember, well, ladies, sisters, women, 
You rebelling against God, not having a man to rule over you, even though you say you want a man to rule over you? No, 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 no. no. Your problem isn't with the man. Your problem is with God. 1 Corinthians 11, verses 1 and verse 3. Be ye followers of me, even as I also am of Christ. Now I praise you, brethren, that ye remember me in all things, and keep the ordinances as I delivered them to you. But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. And this is not demeaning to women. Women, you bring children into the world. You are more sensitive. You are more nurturing. You are more caring than us men are. Okay? That is a noble, glorious position. A glorious, noble role, if you will. Okay? Us men, you know, you ladies, you know us men. You know what we li we're like. Why do you want to be like that? Why do you want to usurp authority and be as a man when God created you for a special purpose? Sign of the times. I saw a short about this woman saying that, um, and it was quite, quite grotesque about uh, we're basically wizards um, and stuff like that. We create life um, and, and, and other stuff, but it's like <laughs> feminazi, anyone? Yeah, yeah. And 1 Corinthians chapter 14, 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 34 on to verse 40. Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. Scripture is plain. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. For it is a shame for women to speak in the church. What? Came the word of God out from you? Or came it on to you only? If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. But if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. Wherefore, brethren, covet to prophesy, and forbid not to speak with tongues. Language, that's not that de demonic blah, 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 blah stuff, okay? Let all things be done decently and in order. So, if any man be ignorant, let him be ignorant. Hey, that's not a... No. If they don't want to know, if any man be ignorant... Let them be ignorant. If they don't want to know, willful, igno willful ignorance, okay, go away, go away, okay, go away, stay away, bye-bye, bye-bye. Because what has happened, especially, especially within this charismatic stuff, uh, you have Revelation chapter 2. Revelation chapter 2, verses 18 on to verse 24. Now unto the angel of the church in Thyatira write, These things saith the Son of God, who hath his eyes like unto a flame of fire, and his feet are like fine brass. He wasn't black, he wasn't white, he's Jewish. He's Hebraic. He's of Shem. Okay? I know thy works, and charity, and service, and faith, and patience. And thy works, and the last to be more than the first. Notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman, Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants to commit fornication and to eat things sacrificed unto idols. To commit fornication. A prophetess to teach then say instruction uh yeah hath god said yes they are two different things okay yes they are but 
purposely blurring the thing to justify your own agenda? When I read this, when I read, notwithstanding I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman Jezebel, I stopped. And the Lord's like, Brad. Yeah. Yeah. I admit. I admit my fault. I was wrong. But I have been corrected. And no more. No more. No more. No more. No. This pretty much, a lot of this stuff that's happened recently all started when the Lord had me to go after the charismatics. <laughs> and to also exhort people to um, read the scriptures. And some were offended because I used myself as an example and they thought that I was boasting myself because of what the Lord has allowed us to do. Uh, yeah, you need to get over yourself there, hotshot. Okay. But uh, a lot of this stuff started with the, when the Lord had me to start refuting, rebuking the uh, charismatics. No coincidence there. No coincidence there. But, notwithstanding, I have a few things against thee, because thou sufferest that woman, Jezebel, which calleth herself a prophetess, to teach and to seduce my servants, to commit fornication. Now, not all fornication is physical. There is spiritual fornication. And to eat things sacrificed unto idols. Hmm. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. And I gave her space to repent of her fornication, and she repented not. Behold, I will cast her into a bed, and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And you see this, these devils who get outed as being fake. You uh, eventually see them um, congregate with these devils who, uh, there's one individual who has a really commanding voice who I really thought was a brother. Uh, seeing him have um, dealings with a known devil Satanist. Catholic. It's like, <laughs> oh, there you go. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because they're of the same spirit, not the spirit of the Lord. So that, and Jezebel's spirit is not in scripture, not in scripture anywhere. But a woman who is a Jezebel, I mean, you look at, uh, you look at some of the, uh, Women that follow everybody's favorite YouTube Jesuit. Uh, the Jesuit from New York. Okay. Um, you look at some of those women that follow him. Yeah. 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 Behold, I will cast her into a bed and them that commit adultery with her into great tribulation, except they repent of their deeds. And here, here's something that a lot of the red word Christians don't like. And, and see this in Cambridge, and they're not red words. So, And I will kill her children with death. Be unfruitful. Be unfruitful. And all the churches shall know that I am he which searcheth the reins and hearts, and I will give unto every one of you according to your works. But unto you I say, and unto the rest in Thyatria, as many as have not this doctrine, and which have not known the depths of Satan, as they speak, I will put upon you none other burden. Hmm. 
It's a spirit of, of whoredom. It's a spirit of fornication. It is a spirit of antichrist that these women who, you know, and even, even the one um, charismatic lady it's like, I'm not teaching. I'm prophesying. Uh, <laughs> okay okay you you keep doing what you're doing yeah you keep doing what you're doing good luck at the great white throne of judgment okay let's finally stop at first peter chapter three. First peter chapter three Verses 1 under verse 7. Likewise, ye wives, be in subjection to your husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. And see, this is giving credence on to if their husbands are lost or something like that, or whatever, but also that by the chaste conversation, the chaste attitude of a godly woman, if her husband, if her husband is saved or whatnot, and she being more humble and modest than he is, you know, you know, that's a way that you sisters can help your husbands. Okay, if your husband is being a little too gruff, being a little too proud, acting a little too worldly, you know. While they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear, fear of the Lord, whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of plating the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel, but let it be the hidden man of the heart, the hidden man of the heart. That's supposed to be the Lord Jesus Christ. In that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, and if you're blah, 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 blah. Is that meek? Is that quiet? Is Gail Ripplinger meek and quiet? I recommended um, Gail Ripplinger. I mentioned unto uh, someone about, hey, look at her. I was wrong. I was wrong. I've watched that whole thing of Gail Ripplinger. I actually have it downloaded. And the information is good, but it's like, she's teaching men. She's teaching. Not just men, she's teaching. And that's against, that's against scripture. And you can try to cloud it and confuse. God is not the author of confusion. You know? I'm not teaching, I'm inst just instructing. But let it be the hidden man of the heart, in that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is in the sight of God of great price. For after this manner in the old time, the holy women also, who trusted in God, adorned themselves, being in subjection unto their own husbands. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are, as long as ye do well, and are not afraid with any amazement. All about that woman, huh? Like, remember, Proverbs 31. The first part is about us men. Okay? Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge. you got to remember this. Giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. Weaker. Not as strong as we are. If you have a woman who is stronger than you, oh, that's kind of, <laughs> you know, my weaknesses, my wife is strong in. And my, my wee, wife's weaknesses, I am strong in. That's not what that's talking about, okay? The woman is to be the weaker vessel, physically and also emotionally and stuff like that. Praise the Lord for it. That's the way a meek and quiet spirit, okay? Absolutely. 
But when you have a domineer, better to live in the corner of a housetop than with, in a white house and with a brawling woman? No, it's better to dwell in the wilderness with an, than with an angry and a contentious woman? Yeah. You ever been around a contentious woman? And hey, hey, hey sisters, amen to, it's like, well, what about a, yeah, of course, of course. Contention is no good. And it's contention that some of you are bringing up. And you yourself are the one who's lying. Because you understand, but you are putting off that you don't understand. That's wicked. That's deception. You're a lot smarter than you want people to believe that you are. And you know exactly what you're doing. Stop it. Stop it. Because if you want to go dirt slinging, there are quite a few people that could be brought off, that could be brought up, who could also, against you, It's a mess. It's a mess once you try to go in the area that some of you are going in. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life that your prayers be not hindered. Finally, be ye all of one mind. There are those recently who I thought I was like-minded with, and I said, whoa, no, I'm not. And all the while, you're looking at me with that smug look on your face. And you knew that we weren't like-minded either, and you didn't, and it just came out recently, the insane nonsense that you believe. Oh, wow. Wow. Finally, be ye all of one mind, having compassion one of another. Love as brethren, be pitiful, be courteous. Not rendering evil for evil, but railing, or railing for railing, but contrarywise, blessing knowing that ye are thereunto called, that ye should inherit a blessing. For he that will love life and see, see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil, and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. And are you seeking peace by attacking and slandering a brother which you are lying about? Oh, he's a liar. He's a liar. He's a liar. No, no, no. You understand, but you're playing that you don't. That's deception. And that's all we got to say about that. So that's going to be it for this video. This was not the video that I wanted to do today. But this was something that I had to address because um, I, I, I just can't sit there and bite my tongue while someone I love is being attacked wrongfully. Wrongfully. Thank you so much for all of you who help us and who pray for us and uh, who are there for us, our friends. It's getting uh, smaller and smaller. <laughs> but um, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We love you so very much. And those of you who are having these problems, repent of them. Life isn't worth it. Okay? It is not pleasing on to the Lord. You have other things in your life to be concerned about. You need to drop these things and to be as a dark implant hiding behind something. Come on. Come on. Come on. 
Repent. Repent of these things. Repent of these things. Or do as you will, as you are going to do. And um, God have mercy. Got to go. Got to get that dog out. Beautiful day. Also, um, like I said, um, trying to get a hold of the brethren. Um, there's a brother in Oregon that um, I have yet to get a hold of. Um, been busy, brother, so uh, bear with me, okay? <laughs> but uh, a brother from New Jersey who have been really worried about also. And uh, if I don't, if you don't hear from us, be patient. Be patient. Understand, too, recently with my wife and her hip, and um, now uh, it's made, been made obvious that we are going to be moving this year. Uh, praise the Lord. The Lord brought us to this place for two specific purposes. And those purposes have been fulfilled. And now that it's, uh, we can't afford to live here anymore. So we're going to be moving this year somewhere. So please keep us in your prayers for that. Uh, but anyway, we love you. And like I said, if these things are in you that we have been discussing the last two videos, please repent. Please repent. Please repent. Please repent. We love you. And we will see you in the next video whenever that may be. Probably be Monday or some other day. We'll see. <laughs> But we love you. Thank you so much for watching this if you do. And hopefully this has helped some of you.